Hello everyone, uh, my name is Holden Shepherd. Uh, I work as a young adult author and copywriter, um, but before that I studied the Bachelor of Arts. Uh, so I studied uh, writing and French. Um, I've come from Geraldton as well, so I'm a Jared Jared, so I'm not the only country person on the panel. Um, so I, I've studied uh, a little bit of Japanese uh, in high school, which I'll talk about shortly, um, but uh, I didn't have the opportunity to continue with that. The only thing I can remember is, uh, I'm going to say this wrong, Skinny Kawate or Shokyo which is from Sailor Moon, which means in the name of the moon I'll punish you. Um, that's, that's the only thing I can remember from my Japanese studies, unfortunately. Um, beyond that, I've studied Italian and half Sicilian, so I speak uh, Italian and the Sicilian dialect, and my main study has been in French. Um, so I'll talk about majoring in French and going beyond uh, the major and doing some extra studies to get fluent. Um, some of these photos are from a few of my travels, so uh, the one at the bottom is the Eiffel Tower by night, I took my partner on a, a dinner cruise down the Seine and proposed that night. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Um, the other one down here is in Mauritius, where they speak uh, English, French, and Creole. So they don't speak any Creole, um, but it's a really fun language for us when people are going um, So I practice my French there. Top right is in, it's right on the shore of Lake Como in Italy, um, which is absolutely beautiful. And the top left is when I used to host a radio show on a community radio called French Conic, um, and it was all in French. So we just play French music and speak in French and talk about French culture. So it's really fun. That's it. Great. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so we'll get a hold of. You studied Japanese in years 89 at high school, but didn't have the opportunity to continue into the senior secondary years. How did you feel about this lack of opportunity? And why did you decide to recommit studying your language at university? Um, thank you. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned before, I studied a little bit of Japanese uh, in year 89 high school. So I went to high school in Geraldton, and basically uh, the opportunities are not the same as in uh, a larger metropolitan city. Um, if the teacher who teaches Japanese moves away, the Japanese course goes away. Um, so that's what happened. So I was enrolled to study Japanese in year 10 and kind of rocked up on the first day of Japanese class. And uh, they said, oh, there's no teacher. <laughs> uh, the teacher moved away, so we didn't have the option, and that was the end of my Japanese studies. Um, so I guess just a, just a, a caveat to say, um, value what you guys have, because you can have a lot of opportunities here to study um, languages. Um, so yeah, I, I was a bit bitter about that, so I really wanted to study a language, and I'd always been keen to learn other languages. Uh, so when I got to the end of year 12, and I uh, basically turned 18, the next week I went on a gap year and just backpacked around Europe for a bit, um, and I realised I really loved language. I loved French, I loved Italian, I loved the Romance languages. Um, and I really wanted to learn how to speak by these people. Like if you've heard people speak fluently in Italian and French, they just sound amazing. They just sound so impressive. And that's that kind of that philosophical snobby kind of thing, but they, they sound really cool. Um, and I thought, I want to sound cool like that. So uh, that's what I chose to do. So uh, rather than pick up Japanese, uh, I picked up Italian and French. Um, one thing I would um, consider if you're going to study more than one language at once, uh, which is what I did, um, consider whether or not you have the capacity in your brain to do that. Um, so I was studying Italian and French at the same time, and I got into one of my oral exams and was asked something really basic, and it was the uh, French oral exam, and I would see. Um, so, which, you know, it, it is a word in French, but uh, it wasn't the right word I was trying to say, I was trying to say oui. Uh, so consider whether or not you can uh, take on both of those at the same time. Um, but yeah, so basically I chose to um, drop Italian after a while to focus on the French, and I wanted to get really, really good at French. Uh, so I did a major in French introductory. I have no background at all um, in French, so I'm starting from scratch. Um, I don't know enough about UWA whether you can start from scratch, you can. Yep. Um, I studied at ECU, so I was able to start as an introductory student, went through intermediate level, and then through the advanced units. Um, after I did that, I thought I want more. So after I finished my course, I actually went back just to do a diploma by itself. So a diploma of language studies in French. Um, and after I did that, I was like, I still wanted more because I wasn't still fluent and I really wanted to sound cool and I still sounded really stuttery. Um, so I did something through Alliance Française called the DELF, which is the Diplôme Apprendi de Langue Française. 
and that is further study. It's like an examination, basically, from the French Ministry of Education. And once you pass that, it gives you entrance into like French university, or you can work freely in France. Um, it accredits you as a, a, le a level of fluency in French, basically. Um, so that's kind of my journey in terms of what I've studied after that. Thanks, Holden. Tell us about how you found your knowledge of French to be useful, both here in Perth and while travelling overseas. Also, what other skills have you developed through your language studies? Okay, great. Um, so I guess the first and most obvious skill you pick up when you study language is the ability to use it, which means you can use it in its own context. So when I've travelled um, back to France, Belgium, uh, Switzerland, uh, Italy, Mauritius, I've been able to use these languages that I've studied. Um, and it is a really cool feeling, I think those on have done the same thing. It's a really cool feeling of mastery when you can go to a country and speak in the local language and actually get along and, and kind of uh, make your own way and make yourself understood and get things that you need. Um, you can also, as a traveller, it makes you a little bit more of a savvy traveller. Like I had to deal with uh, some taxi drivers in Sicily who were trying to rip me off. Um, so thankfully I could speak Italian and Sicilian, so I could swear it a little bit in the right language. Um, but I could also kind of engage with them in Italian and say, actually I'm not paying you, and this is, like, this is what's happened, this is what I was expecting. Um, so it actually gives you a little bit more um, competency when you're a traveller in those countries. Uh, in terms of personal um, experience and benefits, I'm a partner's native French speaker, so that helps. Um, but more broadly than that, it helps with my in-laws. Um, so uh, it's really useful to be able to speak to my in-laws and impress them um, in their native tongue. Um, and more broadly than that, I think we'd all agree that kind of learning another language kind of helps your love life. Like generally, like it makes you more um, more attractive in some way, I guess you'd say. Um, people are always really impressed when you say you can speak a language, so I don't think I'm wrong in saying that. I'm wrong. <laughs> um, beyond, the, beyond the personal stuff, um, in my work, kind of in my domain of working and writing and that kind of thing, um, being able to speak and read French is really useful for research. So I, I was doing a, a paper for my honours thesis a while back and I had to find a particular piece of information and it just didn't exist in English. Like, it, there was no research in English on this particular thing. And I had to search and search and I found it in French. There's this whole French journal article that talked about exactly what I needed and thankfully I spoke the language and I could use it for my thesis. Um, so, uh, kind of what we were saying before about the, um, the web pages across the world being in different languages. Same with research and knowledge in general. Knowledge is in a whole heap of other languages, it's not always translated across. Um, so that's been really beneficial. Um, it's really good as a party trick um, when I do press and media kind of stuff as an author. I can tell you about where I speak French. Um, and that kind of gives the interviewer something to ask me to talk about. Um, and I guess in a really corporate sense, which is a little bit boring maybe, um, but I work in uh, stakeholder management and relationship management for university. So I, I have to build rapport with people. And you would never believe how far it can go to know someone's native language and be able to communicate to them in that. So I, even last week, I was thinking, how am I going to, you know, what am I going to talk about when I talk about how I use my French experience? And that exact night, I was running an event, someone rocked up to it late, she was panicking. She said, hello, my name is Laurence. I said, oh, welcome, Laurence. She said, like, you pronounced that perfectly. <laughs> um, and we ended up having this 10 minute chat in French, and then we became best buds. And that just built this total rapport between us. And I realised I do that all the time with students, with colleagues, with external stakeholders. You use that language to build rapport. Um, and even when I used to work in banking, which was really not fun, um, but there used to be a lot of uh, Italian customers who'd come in and they wouldn't know how to speak English. And you'd become the guy who spoke to the Italian customers <laughs> to help them get their money out or to send money back home to Italy and things like that. So in terms of like making yourselves more employable, and having a career and becoming more internationalised and how you think about getting a job and where you're going to go with your life because you probably won't just stay in Perth. You may work overseas, you may live overseas. Um, this stuff helps you become a more internationalised citizen of the world, so to speak. Thank you, Holden.